How is it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the We Are United podcast. I am flying solo today on this very cold and dreary Sunday afternoon. Uh, Gary and Lucas are actually super busy today. I am super busy. Um, We have a lot going on right now. A lot of new things that we are very excited about coming very early in January of 2017. So Lucas is working on a side project today. Gary's working on a project. I've been working on one all afternoon. Uh, I really, really love to get into it right now, but we just can't. It's not quite time. So I think next week on the podcast, it will be uh, myself, Gary, and Lucas all together for the very first time. Um, And we're going to be letting the cat out of the bag, letting you guys know exactly what's going on in the new year. We have great new programs. Um, We're looking at some different ways to service our clientele, to reach out to um, a younger clientele, an older clientele, and really expand what it is that we do. You know, we started this company, uh, it's called United Personal Fitness because it's it's you the client and we the trainer working hand in hand to accomplish goals. Like we are really united. Your goal is our goal. And that's how we that's how we look at it. But today, I thought since it's just me, maybe I would take a few minutes and just kind of give you some background about how I ended up in this business. Um, and then maybe see if I can get Gary and Luke to do this uh, on another podcast. You know, let them do one on their own. Because um, I really want to hold off on the big announcements I put on Facebook last week. This week would be the big announcements. But I don't want to say too much too fast until we have it all completely ironed out with like all the facts. And that way you guys are are ready to go like immediately once you hear the podcast you know exactly what to do and where to go um, of course you know we've been doing the flip side cooking show we're getting a lot of good feedback off of it uh, Gary and I are having a blast doing that show um, the podcast we're having fun with it we're going to get a little more diverse in the new year and that's going to be part of the announcements but I thought today maybe I would just give you guys um, a short little story about how I ended up as a personal trainer and and how I contribute to what we do at United. Um, I've been avidly working out for probably mm, 20 years. I started in high school. I played high school sports. Um, I played a little bit of everything at one time or another. My my main sport was always football. I played volleyball. I played basketball, baseball. Um, if you're keeping score, I'll play it. That's that's just how I am. So, of course, I took weightlifting in, in high school. Didn't take it as seriously as I probably should have, but I was young. When I got to college, I really fell in with some gym rats. I mean, some guys who could just straight up bring it in the weight room. I mean, these guys were animals. We'd work out four or five times a week. Probably push more weight during that time than any other time. Um, Because you always had spotters. My roommate was, was a workout nut. I mean, just everybody around is is in workout mode all the time. Uh, everybody eats whatever's popular. You know, we're, remember one time we went on this, like, we ate nothing but, like, red meat. And, I mean, Atkins was really popular then. We were like, no carbs. We did everything wrong half the time. But it got me interested in working out because I could see how it was changing my body and how how much stronger I was getting in a relatively short amount of time. And when I was in high school, I dislocated my knee on two different occasions, and I did it again in college, uh, my left knee. And working out with those guys gave me the confidence to push my knee and to get it to, to where it is now, where I've been completely free of any kind of knee brace for almost 15 years, and now it's like it never happened. But there was a time I could barely walk without it coming out of joint. It was pretty bad. And... Working out with those guys got me into a habit of working out and got me really interested in 
helping other people. So what happened is I would start, you know, as a junior or senior in college, I'd meet freshmen and sophomores. And they would come in and I would put them through workouts and show them what I was doing and do what, you know, do for them what these older guys did for me when I was a freshman there. And then by the time I graduated, when I left high school, I was about 160 pounds. When I left college, I was 185, probably about 9% body fat or so, um, ready to rock coming out of college. And shortly after I graduated from college, we moved here to Greenville in South Carolina, my wife and I. And I took a youth pastor position at one of the bigger churches here in town. And a lot of the kids there wanted to work out with me. So I would get a gym membership at a local place. And they would just come when I came. And I would spot them, put them through workouts, help them with their food. Because then I was kind of getting dialed in on the nutrition. I started to study more. And I was like, man, we need to get this stuff balanced out, get more protein, Carbs aren't bad. We need we need carbs. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I had a little following, five, six, eight kids that, you know, all between the ages of like 13 and 18 that I would just work with. And one day I was uh, working out with them in, a, in, a, in another gym, and one of the trainers came up to me and said, how many people do you actually work with? And I was like, I don't know, man, like six or eight. He's like, are they paying you? I'm like, not really. I mean, they'll buy me lunch every now and then or you know, hook me up with some tickets or something, but I'm not really in it for that. And uh, he was like, won't you come work for us? And now it's my first personal training job. I, I got certified um, not long after that and started working with them. And I never felt more at home doing anything than when I was training other than youth pastoring. And... You know, truth is, youth pastors really, you can't really make enough money to support your family. And at that time, we had, we already had our daughter, who was two, and then we're about to have our our son, like right after that. I mean, he, he was, he was due in a few months. So I had to, I had to find a way to make a little more than I was making as a youth pastor. And I figured, well, I can still volunteer as a youth pastor, which is what I really like to do, but I can make my money somewhere else and I can do both. So I started training with them. Um, it was a good company. We always had uh, plenty of consults. And what I learned is that I was fulfilled in that job and I was able to help people. And I think that's the biggest reason why any of us are doing this. Um, it's the feeling that you get when you meet a person who is 80, 100, 150 pounds overweight they are literally at the brink of giving up. And you convince them that if you just put your trust in me, do what I tell you, good things will happen. And then watch that person lose that 150 pounds over the course of that year and see the improvement in their life, the ability to lay down on the floor and then get back up, which most people just completely take for granted. But when you can't do it, it's the most important thing to you. Um, and then having like young kids come in who are timid about lifting heavy and timid about working out and you know shy and awkward and not sure and then watching their confidence grow as they you know push over 200 pounds for the first time on a bench press. Like knowing that's been a plateau for them, knowing that's been a, a sticking point and then watching them get over that mental hump um, watching someone who you know is wanting to play football at a high level but just doesn't have the explosiveness and then working them out and training them to be explosive and then hearing the stories of how now they're starting last year they rode the bench and coach barely even looked at them and now they're starting and they're starting in the position that they want to start in and they're playing well that's the kind of stuff that I get up for. You know, a lot of people are like, dude, don't you get up at like 4 o'clock every morning? Yeah, most mornings. But I'm a lot happier getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and doing something that I love to do than getting up at 
seven thirty or eight to be at the office at nine and sit at a desk all day and crunch numbers and work for somebody else um, that doesn't have any personal vested interest in me or what I'm doing. You know, with this job, you you have a lot of bosses. People think that we don't have any bosses, but every client I have is a boss. They're just as much an influence on me as I am on them. You know, if they're expecting me to be there at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm there at 5 o'clock. That's my appointment. It's their appointment. You know, the accountability goes both ways, but I would rather have 25 bosses that I'm personally personally have a vested interest in and they have that in me then they just go punch a clock and sit at a desk all day I mean I, I got a great job man I, I I count to 10 and I figure out what you eat and I keep you on track we talk about your life we talk about your kids I talk about my kids I mean I've got clients I have some of the craziest conversations with Half the, I, I got one client if I crack a joke he's done for Ten minutes, like I can't get him back. Uh, you know, I, I train friends that I've known a long time. I, I, I picked up clients that I didn't know at all. Just met them completely cold in the mall, and worked it out. And you know, now we talk regularly. I've got clients that I still call and talk Carolina basketball with, and Carolina football. And you develop relationships with people in this in this job that you don't always have the ability to do in other places a lot of other jobs require you to be so personal that or so professional rather so professional that you can't get personal like you can't you can't be friends with the client because that's your client whereas this you got to blur that line i mean you can't nobody wants to be with anybody for an hour if there's no conversation there's no camaraderie like Anybody can count to 10, and anybody can come up with exercises. Anybody can read a book and, and know what to do, but not everybody can be there for that person. And, and sometimes I'm having a rough day, and my clients are the ones that pick me up. You know, it, it means a lot when a client comes in and they've been trying to push past the goal and they hit it. It'll turn your day around. It turns mine around. I mean, it, it fires me up because I'm like, if that dude can do it, if he can get over his mental hump then I can get over mine I can make this thing work you know because we we deal with a lot of adversity in this job a lot more than people think you know a lot of people think that we just count to 10 and make our own schedule and do whatever we want to and that's just not true you have to keep changing in this in this business you can't afford to get lazy or complacent or you'll get passed up somebody will do it bigger and better than you and you know, we're not trying to rule the world of training, but I don't want to be I don't want to be bad at it either. I want I want people to know that our product is good and solid and that when we say we care, we care, we mean it. And that's why we you know, develop United Personal Fitness when we had the the opportunity to go off on our own and to do this thing for ourselves to to create our own nutrition create our own workouts to have the freedom to create new programs to do things like this podcast the flip side cooking show these are things that the three of us always wanted to do but we couldn't do it within the confines of working at another company because you have to fall in line with the with the goals of the company and their goal is usually to make more money and Stuff like this doesn't make us any money. But this is what we're passionate about. Doing this podcast doesn't make us any money. The flip side doesn't make us any money. But that's what we love to do. And you're not able to do that when you're working at another company. Because they want you to sell more, work more. That's just how... That's capitalism. That's work. That's corporate life. I was totally fine with it when I was younger. But now I'm looking at this thing as a bigger picture. And I'm looking at it with Gary and Lucas and I'm saying, guys, what do we want to do? What makes us happy? You know, what makes our clients happy? Let's go do that. And let the money take care of itself. Let's let's go do what makes us happy 
and let's do it right. And I think that's what we're doing. You know, like when we make these announcements next week, you'll get to see our heart a little bit. You'll get to see where where our hearts really are um, about fitness as it relates to all age groups, as it relates to all social groups. Like we we want everybody to have a chance at their fitness goals if that's what they want. That's our goal. Um, you know, and with the, with the formation of the company, it was three guys who could literally do this on our own and be fine. But we decided if we stuck together, what more could we accomplish together? You know, a lot of people can be rock stars by themselves, but when they're in the right situation with the right group of people, they become unstoppable. You know, they, they can move. They can make things happen. And that's that's what we want to do. That's what I want to do. I want to be a part of something that matters. Like, I don't want to wake up every day and hate my job because I've been there before. When I wake up in the morning, it's early. There's days where I wake up and the sun's not out. And when I get home, the sun's not out. I just have to take your word for it that it came up. But... I'm happy the whole time. There's there's days I miss meals and miss workouts because we get busy working on stuff, but this is what I want to do. This is what we want to do. And we we count our blessings all the time that we get to do it with great people like you. And if you're listening to this podcast and you're not part of the United Family, you're not training anywhere, man, give us some feedback. If you're out of state, out of county, whatever drop us a line hit us in the comments you know we respond to everything um we want to we want to be there for you if you're looking for a trainer uh and you're in milwaukee we'll help you find one i mean we said this in the last podcast we're we're not we're not above that um we're just three regular dudes man like (laughs) we're just three regular guys We're, we're we're not we're not anything other than what we are, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But, you know, for me, getting into this this business was all about seeing what impact I had on those kids when I was youth pastor and in college and, and then learning that I could do this and support my family and help people at the same time and wake up every day and love what I do. And I don't know many people that can say that. And... You know, I'm completely 100% honest when I tell you that this is what I love to do. This is what I've always wanted to do, and I'm doing it. Um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But I'm going to wrap it up right there. This was kind of short and sweet. But just remember, next week it'll be me, Gary, and Lucas on the We Are United podcast together. We're going to be dropping bombs. I'm talking about big, huge, fun, awesome announcements that we cannot wait to tell you about. We're bursting at the seams right now. Um, Like I said, they're busy, I'm busy, but we'll all be together next week. You guys have a great week, and we'll catch you later. And this has been the We Are United Podcast. See you guys.